Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today I will be looking at this wee beastie which is the RTX 3070. This great new graphics card from NVIDIA, it costs $500 and I'm very pleased to report that it is everything NVIDIA promised. It is RTX 2080 Thai performance for just $500. So looking at an absolutely awesome graphics card here, something that AMD will have to really work hard to better. And uh, today we can reveal the performance numbers. As you can see here, I've rolled out one of my test systems and uh, I've got a whole load of performance numbers to talk through with you guys. Compared to the RTX 3080 though, the RTX 3070 is a fair bit shorter, as you can see, a slightly different heatsink design, but you've still got that rear fan that blows through the heatsink, um, but Potentially a bit better for small form factor PCs and that kind of thing. Um, as I mentioned, down there at the bottom, you've got that rear fan, um, both top side on this card rather than one kind of on the on the other side with the 3080. You've also got the 12 pin side mounted power connector, but this only divvies out a single eight pin. Uh, connector on the other end, so not quite as many cables to deal with, but a very, very similar design to the RTX 3080. So in terms of specifications then, it's a pretty monstrous card, but obviously nowhere near as powerful as the RTX 3080. But compared to the RTX 2070 that we saw released back in 2018, this card is an absolute monster. So you're looking at double the teraflops for ray tracing, uh, more than double the shader teraflops, and just a generally monstrous graphics card for the money. So moving on to the performance numbers then, and Borderlands 3, high settings at 1080p, we're looking at a pretty even match between the two cards, which is great news, which is exactly what Nvidia said it would be. Just a couple of frame rates, uh, sorry, a couple of frames uh, different at this resolution, but whether you're gaming um, at pretty much any resolution you'll see later, it's a pretty similar story. So moving on to a 1440p now, again, very, very little difference between the 3070 and the 2080 tie. Just a couple of frames per second on the minimum 99th percentile and just one frames per second, which is basically within the margin of error on the uh, average frame rate as well. And uh, noticeably quicker for the 3070 than the 2080 Super as well, um, especially on the average frame rate. Stepping up to 4K then, and the RTX 3070 once again closely matches and actually um, slightly faster on the average frame rate than the RTX 2080 Ti. Again, matching Nvidia's promises and significantly faster at 4K here than the RTX 2080 Super. 2080 Super, of course, still retails for a lot more than $500. So switching down, so switching to Far Cry New Dawn now, and at 1080p, we're looking again at very similar numbers, a slight advantage for the RTX 2080 Ti, um, and of course this game, no uh, DLSS or ray tracing or anything like that en enabled here, just just raw uh, raw shading, and uh, we're looking at similar frame rates. And again, at 1440p, we are looking at a very similar situation, just a couple of frames per second behind the RTX 2080 Ti. And uh, of course, if you want to step up, you've got more cash, the RTX 3080 does offer significantly more performance. And finally then, at 4K, again, we're dealing with a very similar situation. This is pretty much one of the biggest differences between the RTX 3070 and 2080 Ti here, uh, the Ti being in the, the lead, but for most other tests, you're gonna see much, much closer performance numbers than we're seeing here. Next up is Metro Exodus, and at 1080p with RTX enabled, we're looking at pretty much a dead heat, just single frames in here. And uh, of course, with the RTX 2080 Ti retailing for three times as much, it's no no prizes for guessing uh, which graphics card you should be going for. The RTX 3080, 3070 is a fantastic card here. Moving up to 1440p, once again, nearly identical frame rates, just a few frames per second um, difference and uh, three frames at 40 frames per second, slightly more of a, of a benefit going for the RTX 2080 Ti, but in no way worth that extra price premium. 
And once again, unless you can find an RTX 2080 Super for well south of $500, the RTX 3070 is absolutely the car to go for. It's miles faster than the 2080 Super. And once again, we're not looking at a huge difference between the RTX 2080 Ti and the 3070, just barely a couple of frames in it at uh, 4K in Metro Exodus. So Wolfenstein Youngblood at 1080p with DLSS, DLSS and ray tracing enabled, again is pretty much a dead heat. The RTX 2080 time managed a slightly faster minimum 99th percentile, whereas the RTX 3070 managed a slightly higher average frame rate. So once again, the RTX 3070 absolutely the best value card here. Switching it up to 1440p now then, again with DLSS and ray tracing enabled, we're looking at a, again, just a dead heat between these two cards. Only the RTX 3080 was able to offer significantly more performance. And uh, once again, with uh, triple the price of the RTX 30, 3070, the RTX 2080 Ti just is no way worth uh, more than $500 at the moment, basically. And uh, 4K, again with DLSS and ray tracing enabled, the RTX 3070 actually pulls slightly ahead here than the 2080 Ti with the best performance against the old flagship with a minimum 99th percentile of 110 frames per second versus 106 frames per second for the old RTX 2080 Ti. The next game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider and at the highest settings with a uh, resolution of 1920 by 1080 we're looking at a uh, reasonable reasonable lead for the RTX 2080 Ti. I'm uh, not entirely sure why this is but uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider wasn't widely publicized by Nvidia so this is maybe why this is one of the games where it just doesn't perform quite as well. Um, stepping up to 2560 by, 40, by 1440p, I did rerun some of these numbers to make absolutely sure, but the RTX 3070 lacking a little bit of, um, of headway here uh, against the RTX 2080 Ti, but again, the RTX 2080 Super is a lot, a lot more expensive and as is actually slower in this game, so still hats off to Ampere in this test. Stepping up to 4K and uh, Gap closes a little bit. You've got a 99th percentile minimum of 43 frames per second versus 40. So kind of uh, much more similar in this benchmark and uh, significantly faster than the 2080 Super as well, which I've already mentioned, is still retailing for a lot more than the RTX 3070 is meant to retail for. So Borderlands 3 then at 1080p. Once again, we're back to level pegging and just a few frames in it here um, at 1080p at high settings. Uh, 99th percentile of 86 frames per second versus 83 frames per second. So absolutely no question you would go for the RTX 3080 here um, unless you can find an absolute bargain basement RTX 2080 tie. And uh, again at 1440p, stepping up the resolution, again at level pegging. Um, absolutely even Stevens here and uh, not so much of an advantage over the 2080 Super but as I've already mentioned the 2080 Super is still retailing for well over $500 at least here in the um, or equivalent of it, at least here in the UK and I had a quick look at Amazon before I recorded this and the Super is still retailing for a lot more so at 4k the 3070 has a very slight um, edge over the 20, 2080 Ti, um, just thanks to that one frames per second ad addition on the average frame rate, but it's too difficult to call basically within the margin of error. So the cards, if you, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if there was actually an RTX 2080 Ti under the under the hood. So finally then we get to power consumption and the RTX 3070 drew 343 watts for the system as a whole from the wall and that compares to 403 watts so around 60 watts uh, less for the RTX 3070 compared to the RTX 2080 tie. So it just goes to show the um, the efficiency of the Ampere, uh, Ampere architecture compared to uh, the RTX 2080 tie, which was of course Turing. And um, this bodes well for you know using this card in a small case and uh, where we've seen larger cards suffer a bit if they're generating a lot more heat, but generally you're looking at a much cooler, quieter, more power efficient, uh, less power hungry card in the RTX 3070 than the RTX 2080 Ti 2. So overall then, the RTX 3070 is an absolutely fantastic graphics card which did exactly what Nvidia said it would do in offering 
RTX 2080 Ti performance for a third of the price. $500 gets you a whole lot of performance in this case, and there isn't really a competitor, a competitor graphics card out there at the moment. The RTX 2080 Super, if you can find it in a flash sale for well south of $500, might offer some competition, but in general, this thing absolutely wipes the floor in terms of value with anything else out there at the moment. Until AMD comes comes up with something, there just isn't anything that's, that's comparable. $500 gets you an awesome 1080p, 1440p, and 4K graphics card. So thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Um, every subscriber helps, and I'll catch you soon.